There are a lot of them. I think I may be the only Tory MP who isn't going to stand for the leadership. Why, 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 yeah, why aren't you? People might be surprised at that. What? I think we are in a period of constitutional crisis, of national need for a leader to take over, and we don't want people delaying the process who have no chance of winning. And I think people should reflect very carefully about whether they have any chance and whether it's worth standing. You include yourself, you include yourself in that. I would have been a completely peripheral candidate. I, I've got some support amongst members of the party, but I wouldn't have got through the MPs. So round. if we look at the, the dirty dozen here... He has an electoral appeal. He was able to win in London, which um, uh, no other Conservative seems able to do. Who's uh, going to give him a run for his money? Who's going to give him a run for his money? I think it will be ultimately on a genuine Brexit against um, sort of May-esque Brexit in the final Dominic round. Raab? Dominic is a serious contender, but I don't think he has the backing or the proved electoral success uh, of mm. Boris. So here's the thing about you. See, a lot of people would look at you and you would say, you have got, you are head and shoulders intellectually, say, over a lot of those people. And they say you're not there and you say you're not a genuine contender. And I put it to you, it, bear in mind, uh, your book mm -hmm. is about the Victorians. Um, is it because your image is somewhat antique, if you're with me? Well, uh, look. I think politicians should be who they are, yeah. and I think that's true of Boris. With Boris, what you see is what you get, and some people find it very attractive. Uh, other people have concerns. Or other people think it's an act. Which he, is definitely not. He plays not. the lovable buffoon Absolutely. and... But Boris is the real deal, and I think that's what politics is about. I think the politicians who try to be all things to all people ultimately... So fail. you are who you are. I am who I am. So um, do you think, though, that there are lessons from the Victorians for modern day life? Oh, huge lessons. And that's why I picked many of the figures that I did. So what can we learn from Disraeli, who gets a chapter in the book? Well, Disraeli wanted to improve the condition of the people and he extended the franchise so almost a million more people voted mm. because he trusted the people. I think politicians should have those two thoughts in mind. But then people say they haven't trusted the people. For, that's right. Particularly with the Brexit vote. And we should learn from the Victorians who were better at that. And, and Palmerston's very interesting, another figure in my book, who understands the popular mood without being a populist. So what he wants to do is make his policies as popular as possible, but he doesn't go with the wind, he does what he thinks is, is right. Well, Daisy Goodwin, who, who, um, who wrote Victoria, she was on this show and likened Boris to Lord Palmerston. I think there's something in that, actually. Boris is a soaring intellect and an incredibly good classical scholar. And he doesn't um, do the sort of Blairite thing of pretending to be less able than he is. And Palmerston was an enormously popular figure, but he was an aristocrat, he was a landowner in Ireland, uh, but people adored him because he stood up for their interests. And in the book, I mean, you, you look at the, the spirit of the Victorians, the drive of the Victorians, the values of the Victorians, the leadership that was there as well. But isn't there... Maybe your glasses are slightly rose-tinted. I know you are a historian, but a lot of people would point out to social inequality. They would, they would talk about the, the damage to the environment. They would talk about uh, an industry is built on the slave trade, for instance. But you look at the passion of those Victorians to get rid of the slave trade. And Palmerston, Gordon. Um, Gordon of Khartoum is in Khartoum because he's trying to so stop slavery, that they want to make the world a better place, and they succeed in doing that. Both Palmerston and Israeli get accused of being ministers for sewage as a derogatory term because they're bringing people clean water and getting rid of effluent. And this is really important in matters of public passion. policy. talk about passion. If you're very passionate in your beliefs and you say you're very much yourself, why would you not run for Tory leader? Well, I think Boris would do a better job than I would, and I think it makes sense to support the best person for the job. Well, so what it's, job it's, would you like in the Cabinet? Then? Look, I want us to leave the European Union and I want a Conservative government that go does Conservative things. It is so little about me as an individual, it's about the nation. So, I'll do anything I can to support Boris, but I'll support whoever wins the leadership. I I'm not like Rory Stewart saying I wouldn't help any other leader. I think the Tory party needs to unite, we need to leave the European Union, and I will help anybody to, to do that. Um, would you ever rule out being leader of the Conservatives?
Oh, I, I think it's extraordinarily unlikely, but it's unwise to rule things out. One can't foresee the, the future, um, but don't put money on it. Some yeah. people did, I'm sorry to say, and I'm afraid the bookmakers, as always, and, and are And do you have any sympathy for Theresa May? We saw her break down at the end of her resignation speech. A lot of people said they did feel sympathy, a lot didn't. Of course I had sympathy for her. One can't fail to have human sympathy for somebody who is honest, yeah. decent and dutiful, but whose job hasn't gone well. And I feel sorry for her, but I can't say that I'm not pleased that she's given up because she wasn't delivering Brexit. Well, you've delivered the Victorians, 12 titans who forged Britain. Very, very interesting, the characters you've come up with. Um, really, I suppose, this is a blueprint on Brexit because, you know, it's about free trade, it's about international influence. The thing is, and I would just say this to you, I mean, if that is your message, that was then, this is now, has it really got any relevance? Every country that's embraced free trade has become richer because of it. And if the country becomes richer, the standard of living of individuals become richer. So yes, free trade is very important. But also the book's about leadership. And leadership is important in taking a country forward and in developing uh, the way things work. W.G. Grace is perhaps an unexpected hero. But W.G. Grace created Test Match Cricket basically because he liked making a bit of money. And it's the realisation that you can provide entertainment, you can do well for yourself, but you have to lead. Jacob rees lovely hearing from you. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank, Thank you. you. The Victorians is in bookshops now by Jacob rees -Mogg.